uh, that um, uh, upon request in the past, I've had students, uh, I usually let you guys look at chapter two on your own, but I made a quick 30 minute chapter two video from week one, because uh, the majority of the things that we discussed on week one was uh, word building and the basic uh, parts and how to interpret words. And I gave you a whole bunch of notes, which are good for like, you know, for, for several chapters. But if you look here in your announcements, I added today um, a, a chapter two video that I made last term. And uh, you could watch that if um, you were having some, uh, you know, uh, some issues with, uh, you know, chapter two. Now this week, what are we doing this week? And I got to mute everybody. Okay. Now, of course, uh, if you can't hear me, you guys can unmute yourselves as well. And uh, also, uh, I'll be periodically looking at the chat. Um, what's going on this week? Well, of course, what's due this week is all of, I'm giving an extension for medical language lab stuff because we're, there's a whole bunch of you, about half of you are having some issues and I have three or four students who were just registered over the weekend. So um, if any of you are, let's see if there's any new people. No, uh, un unless whoever's on the iPhone is new. Um, there might be three or four new people because they were just registered over the weekend. So I'm giving everybody uh, opportunity. Um, if you're not complete with all the medical language lab stuff or you're still having some glitchy items, I'll give another week for medical laboratory language items. But of course, everyone I believe did their quiz and I, uh, and everyone, uh, there's, a, there's a ton of you, at least the people who are registered by last week um, did um, the discussions. And look at your discussions, look at the comments that I put. And uh, remember, in order for full credit, you need a citation, you need something to back you up, okay? It's not that what you're saying is not ration, rational or uh, correct. You need something to back you up. And you'll see my discussion topics. There's no real right or wrong, the answer. It's how you um, make your position and how you um, stand by it. So that's what uh, hopefully uh, I'm, I'm training you to do. Now this week is module two, cardiovascular. So if we look at that word, cardiovascular. We already know this word, the root, cardi, with the combining vowel O. So cardi O is the combining form. But now we have another root. So this is an example where there's two roots, vascule and cardi are connected together with an O. AR means pertaining to so it's pertaining to, meaning to, not only we start back here, pertaining to the heart and the vascular system. Now, fancy word for vasculature, vasculature is the tubing. So this tubing is your arteries, your veins, and what uh, connects arteries and veins together, capillaries. Now, if you look at a typical textbook, you'll see that the tubing is colored differently. Um, in real life, you guys know that when you open up a human body or any animal for that matter, it's 18 shades of gray and brown. But uh, in the textbook, you'll see arteries are colored red and veins are colored blue and capillaries are colored both red and blue. So what does that mean? The arteries, they're colored red because the majority of the arteries contain oxygen. And veins, the majority of the uh, blood vessels, namely your red blood cell, uh, traveling in the veins, the tubing, is deoxygenated. Therefore, it carries carbon dioxide. So arteries, oxygen, veins, carbon dioxide. And that's why if ever, you know, when you take, well, when you guys get your blood taken, when, they when we take it out of your vein, it's like maroon or like a dark brown color. But if you've ever seen a really deep cut or maybe an auto accident where there was a really deep cut, it's bright red. 
And that's what? That's arterial blood versus venous blood. And capillaries are the very, very tiny structures in between, and you're gonna learn more about that. But know that cardiovascular, so that a cardiovascular surgeon is not only an expert at the heart, is also an expert at all the tubing, arteries, veins, and capillaries that are connected to the heart because the heart is the pump that uh, pumps all the blood around. So that's cardiovascular. And of course, the discussion forum, did I put one in? I don't think so. So I'm gonna put one in and it's gonna, it's gonna probably be about abbreviations or something of that matter. I'll put it in after, um, and if I forget, uh, someone please remind me. So we're gonna go into our medical language lab, open in a new window, hope, I really hope it is being nice to me. No, it isn't. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, let's view, oh, wait a minute, preview student view, confirm. So we're gonna go into the cardiovascular view assignments. I'm gonna go into cardiovascular. So I'm gonna go into details and I want to read. Oh, you're gonna, what is going on? I think it's my Mac because I tried this over the weekend to show somebody on Zoom and it worked. Oopsies. But now that I'm back on my Mac, it is not working. Nah. All right. Let us. Hmm. There's more than one way to skin a cat here. How's this? Let me go into medical language lab directly. Okay. Why does it just give me a whole bunch of pictures? Oh, wait, well, well, at least while I'm here. This is your typical textbook, what you see here. And of course, this is your heart. You're gonna see some, um, uh, some tubes that are colored blue. And you like here, you're gonna see some tubes are colored red. And if it's blue, it's arterial. I mean, I'm sorry. If it's blue, it's venous or deoxygenated tubes. And if it's red, it's arterial or oxygenated tubes. And if you look at capillaries are the thing that connects the two, you'll see that uh, they're both colored either purplish, which is a com combination of red and blue, uh, uh, red, which is arterial, and then blue, which is the venous side. Now, these are lymph nodes. Lymph nodes, uh, sometimes they're colored yellow, but typically they're colored green. In real life, they're not green, but, um, uh, lymph tissue is always associated with the blood vessels because uh, they take up any extra water. That's one of its functions. And the second function of your lymphoid tissue is to bring uh, white blood cells to areas of, uh, of uh, infection. So for example, if I have an infection like around here, right, versus over here, this lymph node will get big and then you'll have a lymphadenopathy, pathy, meaning disease, lymph, right, which is this structure here, adeno, adeno means um, uh, gland or node in this case. So this has all the pictures, but, uh, okay, this is resources. Hold up. Worst comes to worst, I can easily share last term's lecture because I record everything. 
Let's see. Okay, good. At least they, we had a PowerPoint. Okay. Cardiovascular system. All right. So let's have the slideshow play from start. Okay. So at least uh, we'll have a PowerPoint and then I will also make um, the lecture from uh, my previous lecture that goes through each and every word within the actual chapter five in your textbook. I'll have that available as well. But let's look at, uh, let's look at some structures here and how this particular class can also help you in your other future classes like anatomy and physiology. So for example, your heart has layers. And uh, if you look at the word endocardium, cardi we know means heart and that's the root. Your suffix um, because it's on the end and you have the prefix endo. So if you look at the word endocardium, um is the structure of, endo means inside or within, cardi is the heart. So the endocardium has to be the innermost part. Now, the innermost part is the most delicate part. So if you have an endocardial infraction or infarction, uh, that's bad news. That means the level of your heart attack went all the way to the inside of this. Uh, you, you have a uh, endocardial or a subendocardial MI, which is a heart attack. Um, your patient shouldn't make any plans. They're not going anywhere. Uh, the only way you can get out of that is to get a new heart, unfortunately. Now, myocardium, the same thing. You could see how the prefix changes the word. So endocardium means innermost. Myo means muscle. So the myocardium is this part right here. See this muscly middle part? And then you can also see here, if you look really close, you see there's this little line or this little edge right here? That's the surrounding area. So that's the pericardium. Oops. Which is of course the next slide. So peri means surrounding. So that's gotta be the outermost layer. And you will learn in anatomy and physiology, the pericardium has to be the tough layer on the outside. Uh, things, are on the out, things are on the outside of your body is tougher than uh, things that are on the inside of your body. And it makes sense because the outside of your body has to protect the inside of the body. So it's a sac. It's actually a two layered sac you're gonna learn in uh, anatomy and physiology. So that's the pericardium. So now you can, now you learn three things in one picture, pericardium, myocardium, and endocardium. The pericardium has to always be the one on the outside. The endocardium has to be the part of the heart that's on the inside. And the myocardium is the one in the middle. So typically when you get a heart attack, your myocardial infarction, also known as an MI or an AMI, acute myocardial infarction. And acute means it just happened right that, this weekend, really fast. And it usually affects, and this is your left atrium, usually affects this area right here to the level of your myocardium. Myo meaning heart. And the peri surrounding. Okay, pericardium, pericardial fluid. We already talked about oxygen versus um, uh, carbon dioxide. Now oxygen, they usually typically color it red and carbon dioxide color, uh, color it blue. Now you don't need to memorize right and left for now, but eventually you'll need to know right and your left side because um, uh, if any of you ever had any experience with heart failure, there's right-sided heart failure and there's left-sided heart failure, but you'll learn that in anatomy and physiology. What you need to know is that the main function of the heart is a pump and, uh, and uh, blood flow right? It has valves. And uh, the cardiovascular system, right? We already talked about, I need to get oxygen inside, right? And then of course, I need to get waste or carbon dioxide outside, okay? And you can see how it's intrinsically connected to your lungs. Okay, let's look at some 
common uh, combining forms. Angio. Now, angio, of course, is a combining form because it has the root with the combining vowel. So, for example, I want to do an angiogram. Gram means recording of, angio, right? And uh, angio means vessel. So, any blood vessel. So, this is a blood vessel, that's a vein. This is a blood vessel, that's an artery. So, an angiogram looks at see is there's blockage or uh, there's a turbulent flow, which is not good, um, uh, any effects of blood pressure. Now, I think uh, they're going to go over it. Oh, okay, good. Now, what's an aneurysm? Now, that could be just the term aneurysm by itself without, uh, um, um, without this O. Now, an aneurysm is when you have a defect in this wall of an artery. Now, an artery typically is, uh, has a muscular wall. And if the outside wall of the artery gets weak, it starts to bubble out like a little balloon. Now, that becomes dangerous because the artery is usually under high pressure. That means uh, if it's under high pressure, there is a good chance that this blood vessel that ballooned out that's an aneurysm, could um, burst. Now, if it's in your pinky toe, it's no big deal. But the problem is, what if the aneurysm is in a blood vessel that's big? Like your, uh, here's your aorta right here, your largest artery, and this is going down here to your descending aorta. You have a dissecting aneurysm right here that cuts maybe even half a centimeter, a little hole right here. You'll, you'll be dead in about five minutes. Or um, I had my aunt, uh, she just died uh, last year from an aneurysm. She had one in um, the circle of Willis in her brain. And um, she just went to the bathroom and her last complaint was, oh, I, I, I'm feeling a little dizzy. She went to the bathroom uh, right before she went to work and they found her there five minutes later and she was dead on arrival because that blood vessel, it burst in a very important part of her brain and then it shut everything down. So it's a, uh, it's a serious, serious thing when you have an aneurysm and they're very hard to predict. Um, it's usually predicted by a, um, a history of it. Uh, my, um, my grandmother also had blood vessel uh, stroke issues. My grandfather as well, also my uncle. So is it any surprise that my aunt had that? Will it be any surprise that I'll have something like that? So uh, usually is a, um, a diagnosis of uh, past medical history or past family history. Aorta, we already talked about aortic, right? So here's your aorta, the largest artery. So please, I have a question. Yes, shoot. So if, if aneurysm is a, can be a word of its own, this combining form, what is it going to be? The combining like, form uh, like, for example, um, like uh, if, it, if I wanted to use it in a combining word, um, like uh, uh, aneurysmal, I could attach AL instead of that O, and that would be pertaining to an aneurysm. Or oh, okay. uh, aneurysmography, when I want to do an angiogram on a suspected area of aneurysm. But like I said, it's rare. You find usually aneurysms post-mortem. Post meaning after, mortem means death. Uh, aneurysms is one of those, uh, for lack of a better term, act of God uh, or whatever higher power you believe in. Like, does everyone remember that guy in the 70s, Jim Fix? He was, um, uh, what do you call that? He wrote The Joy of Running and he's the reason why everyone runs. Uh, and everyone was like, oh, this guy is really great and he's like super, super fit. Well, guess what? He had an aneurysm. He went to the hospital with a simple headache. He died later on that day. Um, maybe you guys remember um, the creator of the Muppets, Jim Henson, him too. He came in with just a, a lower respiratory tract infection and then he, he left the hospital in a casket because it's an aneurysm. It, once that bursts, it's very hard to contain the bleeding and um, it is due to a defect within the wall of an artery. And if it's in some place really important, like this, like right here, your aorta. By the way, aortic aneurysm, 
you get that, you'll be dead in 30 seconds. Uh, even if you're right there in the hospital, it's not a darn thing we could do for you. Um, arterio or art, you know, uh, um, artery, right? Arterial, al, pertaining to the artery. Venous, O-U-S means uh, the same thing as pertaining to, right? Oh, symptoms, um, they're nondescript. Um, um, all the patients that I've known uh, and all the cases that I've done, and I'm, I'm in internal medicine, but my mother is in um, neurology. Uh, there, are, there are some people who have absolutely no symptoms. They're not even dizzy, they're not even anything. And like I said, my aunt's last word was, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom. I got a little bit of a headache, that's all she said. And she was acting perfectly fine going to work like every other day. And uh, they found her five minutes later in the bathroom uh, on the floor. And um, she was done. But uh, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're in healthcare. We don't have control who lives or dies. We have control on, uh, can we medically, can we medically or surgically manage the case of our patient? And if we can, we'll do everything in our power to. And that's why we learn anatomy and physiology and, and all this other stuff. Uh, arteriole, right? Now, what's arteriole? Now, arteriole, before we had arterio, right? But if we add an O-L-E to it, arteriole means a small artery. So if we add a U-L-E to a vein, that makes it a small vein. Uh, athero is uh, a fatty plaque. Let's go back to this picture. Now, when we were, when, when we were babies, uh, the tubes here were nice and clean. But just imagine years and years of uh, eating Doritos and soda and chips and really bad things. What will happen? That artery will start to get closed up. And what will you get? You'll get this fatty plaque. Now, your atrium or atrial, al, pertaining to your atrium. Your atrium, if you see here on the heart, do you have this two big rooms here? That's called the ventricle. And you have two little rooms here. That's called your atrium. So atrial, al, pertaining to your atrium, or your big word, uh, your big uh, rooms, ventricle. Now, we already know cardiac, right, cardio. But what's this corona or corona? Now, coron in Latin means crown. And if you look at a heart, right? Let's look at, uh, look at this heart. You know what? Let's look at, let's look at a picture of a heart so we can fully understand what coronary arteries mean. And then you can now know when patients say stuff like, oh, my grandma had a coronary, right? Now you know what it means. Coronary means pertaining to the heart. But what in specifically does it mean? If you look at here, the heart is a living, breathing thing. So it needs to be supplied with blood, just like everything else in the world. But you see here, there's um, blood supply. And when you look at it it's this way, now, you got to use your imagination a little bit that if you turned it upside down and only looked at, uh, it will, doesn't it look like a crown? Because it surrounds it and it's got all the spiky things on the top. So uh, you gotta use your imagination a little bit that it looks like a crown. And what does it mean that when you had a coronary? Now your coronary arteries here, they're very small. And what happens in a heart attack, also known as a myocardial infarction? You see this, the left anterior descending, where is it? Uh, intraventricular. Well, let's just pick one, All right? Oh, here it is. Here's a left circumflex and here. So let's say, for example, that that fatty plaque that we talked about earlier, it got lodged in here and now it's blocking everything. So that's a coronary incident, isn't it? And that's also known as a myocardial infarction because now is there any oxygen or nutrients going through that part of the heart, that part of the heart muscle? No. 
So your coronary arteries get affected and they also get very affected with blood pressure. They get very affected with diet. That's why we get really, really uptight about diet and exercise and things of that matter because your heart too uh, um, is a living, breathing organ. And if you don't get nutrients to it, then it dies. And that's what happens in a myocardial infarction, also known as a heart attack. And then we're going to have to do some coronary surgery potentially and to work on the blocked vessels here. And that's where you get that coronary artery bypass graft or also known as cabbage, C-A-B-G, uh, which is coronary artery bypass graft. We cut a, uh, a vein uh, or an artery from your leg and then we place the bad part here. And that's kind of a, a really, really weird science science thing that happens you got you gotta love science it is it is just as entertaining as science fiction if not more so aorta artery what we're we doing athero so athero let's look at some uh potential words here because it doesn't look like they're giving us uh they're just going through defining forms or maybe later they're going to go through stuff. But let me just give you some words. So, arterio, right? Arterial. Al pertaining to your artery. Vein, right? Venus. Us pertaining to your veins. But if you have a very small vein, you have a venule. If you have a very small artery, you have an artery O. So normal size artery, arterial, right? So, um, um, or just an artery, a normal sized artery. And artery O, very small. Artery Al pertaining to the arteries. Venus pertaining to the vein. Venule means very small vein. Arterial, very small artery. And arterial cardi corona. Now you know that when a person says stuff like, oh, my grandfather had a coronary. Coron, airy, pertaining to, and it's understood that it's surrounding the heart or dealing with the heart. And that thing I talked about earlier, cabbage is coronary artery bypass graft. That's when, um, you know, the patient says stuff like, oh, I had a double bypass or I had a triple bypass. And nowadays quadruple bypasses are even common. That means there were four areas of your heart that were in garbage shape and we had to, uh, we had to um, create another uh, set of tubing to go around the bad tubing. Four areas. That's horrible. But hey, uh, my father, when he was alive, he had one double, one triple in the course of 10 years. And it still didn't kill him. Yeah, but it eventually did. So coronary pertaining to surrounding the heart, cabbage. And I also talked about AMI, which is an acute myocardial infarction. That means it's a blockage of these coronary arteries. And it happened when? Acutely. It happened very quick. And what will it affect? The myo or the muscle part of the heart or the middle layers of the heart that we showed you in that picture. And uh, let's, uh, oh, athero. Let's talk about atheroma, which is uh, never a good thing. Oma, we already know, means tumor. But for us, it means lump or bump. It doesn't mean cancer yet. And athero is what? A fatty plaque. Now, after a while, that fatty plaque gets really, really hard. And what will it do to the lumen or the hole or the passageway for blood? It's going to start blocking it. And then you're going to have athero sclerosis. 
osis, abnormal condition of fatty plaque, and sclerotic is um, sclerosis is hardening. So if it hardens up, what's gonna happen to your blood pressure? It's gonna skyrocket, right? So we're gonna have to go in there and uh, flush that all out. Another thing it's gonna do, what an atheroma will do, it'll even do this to you. Oopsies. Osis, abnormal condition of what? Fatty plaque. Athro fatty plaque, right? But it's not only gonna harden things, it's gonna narrow uh, the passageway, increasing your blood pressure even more. So you could see how a really bad diet and uh, a sedentary lifestyle, doesn't that sound like uh, our choice of uh, job? You know, um, medical professional, we don't, we don't move around too much. Right, and then when we do, it's not too, it's not too far, it's not too difficult. And we eat at very weird and bizarre times and we eat a lot of junk food because we have very long hours. But uh, for, for many healthcare professionals, um, that can't be the norm anymore because uh, uh, you don't wanna be the patient. I definitely don't wanna be the patient. So let us see what's next. Now let's look at phleb. Oh, I forgot to mention phlebo is just like vein. So remember I, I talked about uh, phlebo, Tomi. Tomi we already know from my notes means uh, is the suffix, it's the surgical suffix means to cut and phleb means vein. Now. When they take blood out of your arm, do you, do you guys notice the needle that goes inside you? It's like a knife, isn't it? It's cutting into the vein. So when you do phlebotomy, you're cutting into a vein. And your vein will have what kind of blood? It'll have a deoxygenated blood. And it'll look like dark, uh, uh, dark red or maroon color. But if you do something like an ABG, which is an arterial blood gas, that's a test that goes to an artery and that will be what? Bright red. Okay. Uh, but you guys don't do ABGs. Um, someone told me nurses don't do ABGs anymore. Uh, you interpret them and you can uh, do all these other things, but um, I don't know who told me that, if that's true or not. Thrombo. Now, thrombo is clotting. So let's look at some common words that deal with clotting. Thrombosis. We already know osis means abnormal condition. You know that from up top and from my notes. So if you're clotting too much, right? Oops, I spelled thrombo wrong. Okay, and what is a thrombocyte? It is a clotting cell, right? Also known as a platelet. So if you cannot clot, you'll bleed out. If you have too much clotting cells, you'll, uh, you'll have thrombosis and then everything's gonna get all clotted up. Then that will complicate this stuff up here too. Now, maybe you've heard of uh, this kind of medication, a thrombolytic. Ick means pertaining to, throm is we already know clotting, and lit, L-Y-T, is short for lysis, means breakdown. And since we talked about breakdown, can we talk about analysis or analysis? Breakdown of parts. Cytolysis, breakdown of cells. Do you see how you can mix and match everything, right? Hemolysis, I didn't teach you blood yet, 
breakdown of blood. So there's a whole bunch of things that can break down, whether naturally or unnaturally. And now that you know lysis, now you know breakdown of everything. Now do you know throb, now you know clotting everything. Now you know phleb, right? So if my patient gets phlebitis, they get inflammation or infection of my vein. Right? Now you know everything about an atheroma, which is not, which is not a cancer. Atheroma is a, is a bump or lump or bump of fatty plaque. Now, when's the only time that we can call something a cancer? After a biopsy. Opsy, if you recall, remember I said, if you see why at the end of the word, it's kind of like a little flag to tell you process of. Opsy means process of viewing. Bi means life, bio, is short for bio. So actual living specimen. So you have a lump or bump, right? We call it a tumor. Let's say I found a 2.5 centimeter um, a gelatinous tumor left breast. What am I going to do? I'm going to do an FNAB, which is fine needle aspirational biopsy. That means I'm going to aspire it through a needle, right? And then I'm going to give that living specimen directly to the Department of Pathology. Who's pathology? They're the study of disease. They're the experts. And who's going to help me? Oncology. They're the study of, of uh, tumors, lumps and bumps. They are the masters and mistresses of lumps and bumps. And once you know the lump and bump, what kind of management will I do? Right? A lot of people are like, oh, doctors don't know anything, can't find a cure for cancer. Yeah, we have, we have cures for cancer. We have processes to, uh, to help you to live after cancer. But well, that's laypersons and that's the media, right? There's a lot of things we can do. And oh, by the way, there's, there's also data now in the last 20 years, guess what a lot of cancers are from? Obesity and uh, fat de deposition. And uh, you'll learn why. There's a reason for it. Uh, you'll learn it in anatomy and physiology. Well, at least in my anatomy physiology class, because it has a lot to do with damage and inflammation and um, uh, fibrosis and uh, fat formation, right? So if you have way more things that can uh, cause damage, way more things that can cause fat, you're going to have a predisposition, predisposition to tumors. Oh, by the way, did everyone see that new report by the CDC? Um, the predictor for uh, COVID deaths is BMI. It's not, it's not lung function. Everyone three mo two months ago was saying, oh, it's a history of lung function, whatever. It's now body mass index. It's how obese your patient is. If your patient has closer to a, a BMI of 40, which is like every normal person, every person in America, uh, 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 you're not going to fare well. And um, I have three family members who are, who are positive and they became negative as quick as they became positive. And I can tell you right now, all three of them are non-obese. Non-obese, non-smoker, and they take care of themselves. So it's not, uh, it's not as much as a death sentence. Oh, BMI. BMI stands for Body Mass Index. Uh, and you can look it up on how to calculate it. You use your height and your weight. Um, they don't, um, we don't use it as much as we used to, but it's a nice starting point uh, to, um, it's a nice starting point to, to give yourself a goal on how to drop weight. It's not only weight uh, we're concerned about in the real world, we're concerned about where does your fat like to lie. Like me, I, if I let myself go, I can easily become, I have a lot of uh, fat in the belly area for a male, which will cause a pear-like shape. And that is a positive predictor for uh, coronary disease. And guess what every Garias male looks like, right? Thin on the top, thin legs, but they got this huge big belly. And that's why, unfortunately, every Garias male over the age of 35 has had at least one heart attack. Except who? Except yours truly. Because why? 
It's not because I'm any smarter or any better than my cousins, right? Uh, it's because um, I have knowledge from medical school, from anatomy, physiology, and medical terminology, and it's now dictating how I live my life. Um, and I wish more, uh, more people would live that way uh, because a lot of us are living in fear because of what's, uh, what, what's going on. And uh, we don't do that kind of thing, do we? We live on data and on, 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 uh, on real things. So let's look at varicosities or varicose veins. Let's picture that. Now, veins are usually low pressure and they have these little valves. But when these valves, when you get older, when these valves start to get, start to break down, then there's a backflow of blood. And that backflow of blood will cause this bad boy right there. And it's painful. You'll have something called claudication. And also you'll have, uh, you notice, you'll also have localized, um, uh, what do you call it, um, altered sensorium. You, you, you know, uh, ask your grandma about this or, or any of your family members uh, who have this, or maybe you have this. Because um, if you're in a job where you stand all day, you can easily get this. Um, and that's why a lot of uh, older people and even younger people now, I was looking at the gym, uh, compression socks. Um, a, lot of, a lot of kids nowadays wear them uh, because it's the latest rage uh, because of CrossFit, but compression socks prevent this kind of thing. And also they claim I don't know. I've 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 run a couple of five Ks in compression socks. I didn't have I didn't have better times in compression socks than I did. But you'll see a lot of kids and and also a lot of you know because they emulate sports stars. You see a lot of uh, especially in the NBA, uh, they wear like knee high uh, uh, stockings because those are compression socks. In theory, um, they're supposed to they're supposed to help you perform better and have less fatigue but I haven't seen it. Uh, less fatigue when running is uh, what kind of socks, what kind of shoes, and what kind of insoles uh, you bought. And also, of course, training. Training is always golden. So those are varicosities. See, they get all blue and twisty, and uh, they'll cause claudications, they'll cause pain. It's not fun. Not fun growing older. I wish I could say it was fun growing older. It is not. Now, cardia, gram, graph, we already saw in my notes, gram versus graph versus grapher versus graphy. Remember, how do you remember it all? Let's review. And let's look at the word electrocardiogram or ECG. ECG or EKG, if we're in the lovely uh, German, we're in Germany. And that's electro, cardio, Gram. So if we look at the word gram, electrocardiogram means, gram means the actual recording of the electricity of the heart. And electro is the prefix, heart is the main, uh, main structure, so that's the root. So if we look at ECG, recording of the electricity of the heart, now what happens when I change the uh, suffix to electro cardio grapher. then it's the person who took the recording of the electricity of the heart, blah, blah, blah. Now, what's electrocardiography? Is MED 255 or, or 285? And if you took it and, I, and uh, it was in my class, that is the graphy is the process of recording of the electricity of the heart. So you can see now, the one that you speak to the person is the electrocardiographer. That is the technician. Electrocardiography, right? That's the actual process. That's what you're trying to schedule. Electrocardiogram or electrocardiograph, that is the printout or the video of the actual trace. Or the, and, and, and that's the slang for, for that term, if you, wanna, if you want to have uh, the trace. And nowadays, it's all electronic. 
and you can get a nice little video. It's really neat. Let's now go to the next set. Oh my God, there's like a million slides. We already went to stenosis. Ectasis, we're going to talk more about that when we're in, um, not cardiovascular, we're going to talk it in uh, the respiratory. But let me just give you a quick what ectasis is. Uh, like, for example, bronchi ectasis is the abnormal normal enlargement of the bronchus or bronchioles. So the tubing, the bronchus is the main tubing in the lungs. You have a left and a right one. And then they both branch out like a tree into these smaller bronchioles. Now, if you're a, a long time chain smoker, such as I was, um, uh, you could get emphysema, which I didn't have because I quit a long time ago. You can get bronchiectasis and that's just as bad as bronchitis. You'll have this uh, abnormal enlargement of the bronchioles is just as bad as this bronchitis, which of course is the inflammation or infection of the bronchus. And those of you who had bronchitis, wasn't fun, was it? One of the 101 reasons why I don't smoke anymore. I would love to, but mm. uh, building medical words. Uh, oh, these are nice. But they have a whole bunch of them in. I just want to get to more words, words that we didn't go over. Now, do you see what they're doing? They're taking the words that we already played around with and they're uh, wash, rinse, and repeating. You will notice that for those of you who are messing around with the textbook, and by the way, uh, for the one or two of you that emailed me, I totally forgot to mention, uh, or maybe I think I only briefly mentioned that, you can't really save anything in your textbook, but, um, but if you want to save it, I highly suggest either make a, make a screenshot or a video of uh, your exercises so that if you wouldn't want to remember uh, the answers. So let's look at some of these answers. I'm going to jump right to the answers and let's look at these words. Cardiomegaly. You know when something's mega, it's what? It's huge. So cardiomegaly, uh, actually uh, had a neighbor uh, the other night. Um, she had a squeezing chest pain. And of course, since I'm the only doctor on my block, uh, uh, they came to my house instead of calling 911, right? So um, she eventually uh, told my wife uh, her diagnosis was cardiomegaly. That means her blood pressure was so bad that was making her heart work too hard and her heart was abnormally growing mega. It's growing too big. Electrocardiography, we already went talked about. Thrombectomy. We know ectomy from our uh, chapter one notes that I gave you. Ectomy is the surgical removal or cutting. So if I had a blood clot that's stuck in there in my body and it's causing damage like an infarction, what am I going to need to do? I have to pour, perform a thrombectomy. DVT, deep vein or deep venous thrombosis. This is not good stuff because we looked at the word thrombosis. Osis, abnormal condition, thromb, clotting. And now it's in the deep part of my veins. Uh, ladies, those of you who had uh, children, and we're very, I'm very, very sorry if uh, the nurse and the residents made you walk around minutes after you gave, gave birth, because I wanted to prevent this. Because this clot, if it's in your leg, yeah, it's bad. But the problem with DVT is, do you think that clot could now travel maybe to your brain or to your heart. Yeah, it's one of our fears. So I make you walk around so uh, we can prevent this. And another thing I could do is give you a thrombolytic or an anticoagulant uh, medication. Uh, we usually just give aspirin, which is also, which is a minor uh, thrombolytic. But uh, maybe you've heard of some of these thrombolytic medications like uh, heparin, warfarin, TPA, which stands for tissue plasmin, uh, 
tissue plasminogen activator. Maybe you heard of the, some of that stuff. Uh, this nice DVT, DVT, thrombolytic, very. Eh, why are they getting into uh, pathology? Eh, all right, I'll bite. CAD, coronary artery disease, very, very common, right? And um, a lot of patients um, have this chest pain called angina. Anginal pain is, uh, well, actually, this is getting less and less diagnosed because guess what? Before, when you had coronary artery disease, right, uh, it, would, it would signal you by having dyspnea or shortness of breath, and you will also have some chest pain secondary to some exertion. Like, for example, you, carried up a you carry a box of books or something up a flight of stairs, and then you're going to have this chest pain, which sometimes may start at the chest and radiate to your uh, left shoulder and your uh, uh, left neck or jaw, which is um, because of the way the nerves are all built. Um, that's also the same kind of pain that mimics heart attacks. Well, nowadays we have silent MIs or silent heart attacks because a lot of my patients are either pre-diabetic or diabetic because another thing that diabetes does, it kills your nerves. And uh, so if you don't have any nerve telling you that you have pain, then you won't feel it. But typically, angina or angina, potato, potato, right? Or SOB, shortness of breath, also known as dyspnea. So every time you see this SOB, it doesn't mean son of a beehive. It means this word, dyspnea. Dyspnea, right? And nia is one of the weird words where the suffix and the root is the same thing. So nia means breathing. This means abnormal. It goes breathing. That is abnormal. And abnormal means ab, norm, al, pertaining to away from the rule. And the rule is, should I be, it goes, uh, should I be wheezing and gasping for breath? Should my chest be hurting while I'm breathing? Should I have anything uh, less than 14 breaths per minute and more than 20 breaths per minute? That's all dyspnea, okay? So anything that's away from the rule, away from normal, quiet breathing, and that's dyspnea. And that's our, these are some vague signs of CAD. And like I said, this is what I'm really scared of when you have coronary artery disease or when you've got plaques, when the plaque travels up, right, here, and there's a ring around your brain called the circle of Willis, right? If it ends up there, have a good, t have a good night, um, you're done. It'll be a massive stroke and you'll either have massive debility or you will be dead either way. And of course, uh, inactivity, we all know this to death. And this is not a, uh, this is not a med surge class or a pathology class. Myocardial infarction, we talk about that. Let's get to some other words. Percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. Ugh, let's say that 18 times fast. Now, let's break down each. Well, we already know coronary because of the coronary arteries. We already know angio because angio means blood vessels. We already know plasty from uh, from uh, our chapter one notes. Plasty is the process of repair. Angio is vessels. So let's look at the word plasty first. And then we're going to look at percutaneous transluminal. And you can see how you can have a 25 cent word and um, all you have to do is break it down, right? So let's look at angioplasty. Plasty from our notes means surgical repair. Angio means blood vessel. Okay, now just to relate to other plasty words, let's say I had a boob job or I had uh, my breasts either repaired, right? Now, no, I take that back. Boob jobs are not repair unless, you know, something horrible has happened to your chest and then you want to bring it back to where it used to, where it used to be. But I am not a fan of plastic surgery 
for the sake of looking good. Like, what did I hear that was insane? Butt implants. And uh, a friend of mine is a plastic surgeon. She, she was a great surgeon until she went to uh, plastic surgery. Now she's like in, um, she's in uh, Vegas or Reno or someplace like that. And all she does is tummy tucks all day. But I, I don't understand uh, when she was telling me about, uh, oh, we can, um, we can take fat from your thigh and from your butt and inject it, goes into your face. And I'm like, why would you want to do that? And she was telling me, oh, it's really remarkable. And we were talking shop at, um, at our last reunion in Vegas. I was just sitting there in just awe, like, that sounds disgusting. Why would I want think something that was in my butt in my face? Just so I can make my lips look fuller or my cheeks look fuller. That's not plasty. Plasty means surgical repair. So if I want to surgically repair my breasts, because maybe I had surgery due to, uh, due to cancer and I had to remove my breast, I would want to replace it so that I goes, um, so I can not only look, but feel normal, right? So that's what surgical repair of breast. Now, how about a nose job? That's a rhinoplasty. Surgical repair of nose. Now, there's this article, or maybe I saw it on uh, one of these weird channels like Vice, where you got these 13 and 14 year old girls in the Middle East with their beautiful young noses, but they want the, the cute little, you know, uh, I don't know, the cute little perky nose instead of the nose that they were born with. I think when you're 12 or 13 years old and you're not even mature enough in growing up yet, or even if you're 23, uh, um, why would you, why would you want to totally mess up what, whatever higher power you believe gave you? Um, but I can understand, let's say for example, um, you know, you bash your head through a plate glass window. I had a patient in EMS, um, she was sitting in a cab and uh, a big truck hit her on the side of the cab and her face, uh, went through all the glass and cut her in 32 different places. Of course she's going to have extension plastic surgery and she looked gorgeous after, after you know, four or five surgeries, she looked really great. But that's plastic surgery for repair. But to do it when your face is normal for elective surgery, uh, me personally eh, and professionally, I don't believe that's, uh, that's warranted. But hey, to each his own. And uh, if, it's, if we cleared them and they're safe. So let's look at percutaneous transluminal. Let's look, let, let's cut, let's break down that word. Per, cutane, eos. Eos means uh, uh, pertaining to. Per means through. Cutane is a uh, part of your skin. So we went through the skin. Transluminal. Trans, lumen. Al, al pertaining to, trans means across, lumen, right? Or some sort of pathway or some sort of hole. So percutaneous, transluminal, coronary angioplasty means I went through the skin, right? And then through the lumen of my coronary artery or the hole of the coronary artery, and then I did repair through it. That's all I did. But now that we've broken up into four words that now we can, that, that, that we can take apart, it doesn't seem like a 25 cent word anymore, does it? it seems very, very, oh, here's the, here's the example of the aneurysms I was talking about. Um, the analogy that I put on aneurysm is, is like, if you ever looked at an old, um, uh, what do you call that? You know, like a water hose. And if you've ever seen the, the you know, your garden hose and, the outside part of the garden hose is already worn away. And then when you turn on the hose real full, you ever see it like the bottom part of it or the dark part of it start bubbling up. That's what an aneurysm is. But the difference is that it's a weakness in the wall, arterial wall and uh, that's blood going through it, not water. 
and it's dangerous. Now, hypotension versus hypertension. Let's look at that. How can I tell them apart? They're so close. Well, you know when you have two things that look alike, you're gonna memorize one like your life depended on it. And the way I look at it is, hyper, you know when your kid's hyper, that means they're too much. So hyper means too much or excessive. And tension means blood pressure, right? So this is what? Excessive blood pressure. And those of us who have hypotension know that's not as good. Hypo means what? Decreased or deficient. It means it's too low. Either situation is not good. Either situation will lead to no blood, no oxygen getting to where the patient needs to go. Okay? So remember, hyper, too much. Hypo is just the exact opposite. Okay? So if my patient has hypercalcemia, what do they have too much of? Calcium. If my patient has hypernatremia, what do they have too much of? Um, sodium. If my patient has hypokalemia, they have too little potassium. Now, any of these things that I just said, too much or too little, um, is not a good thing for the body to be. We went through varicose veins. Ooh, let's look at the word arrhythmia. Now let's break that down. AR, rhythm, and IA. IA, we already know, state or condition, just like CIS. AR or A is no, and of course, rhythm. Now, your heart needs to beat at a certain pace, but it needs to beat consistently in a consistent rhythm. Now, if you have an arrhythmia, right, or a dysrhythmia, abnormal rhythm, those are I go um, uh, state of condition. Oops. And if you're in my EKG class, I don't know how to spell rhythm. It looks kind of wrong. Well, you guys can Google it. And in a way, shouldn't uh, 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 shouldn't Microsoft Word be correcting me if I totally got the word rhythm wrong? Well, I don't know. It's something I got to look up. But rhythm means what? It has to have a cadence. It has to have a beat. And having an arrhythmia or dysrhythmia, right? If you have no rhythm, that's not good. If you have an abnormal rhythm, that's not good, uh, uh, good either, right? And of course, we have medications to deal with all of that. And the ironic part about cardiac medication is that if, uh, if you give too much or too little cardiac meds, guess what it causes? Cardiac problems. Haha, <laughs> you gotta love that. You gotta love medicine. It's super, super exact. You can't be too much, you can't be too little, or it causes problems. Now, uh, Brewy, um, remember I told you that you could have blood clots and thrombosis inside your arteries and stuff like that? Well, your arteries are high, they're high flow, high pressure uh, tubes. And what happens when you have a high pressure tube and you have something that's blocking it, it's gonna form like a uh, disruption. So uh, Brewy is like uh, this rumbling. Um, Check it out for any uh, family members who have any um, uh, cardiac insufficiencies or stuff like that. You can feel their heart or their neck. You're gonna feel a rumbling and it's gonna feel weird. And that's what a brewy is. Ooh, there's the word dysrhythmia. R-H-Y, yeah, I spelled it right. Heart block, heart failure. And of course that means, uh, uh, that's a, uh, that, um, heart failure is what we're really scared of. I'm not scared of the heart attack. I'm scared of the impending heart failure that is going to happen if I do nothing after the heart attack. Also known as sequelae or the sequel, what's gonna happen next? 
let's look at that word ischemia. That's really common. Isk. Isk means blocking. Emia means blood condition. Or something blocking or something interrupting. If you have coronary ischemia, it's the precursor for a heart attack, also known as a myocardial infarction. And um, you know you have ischemia. Um, uh, talk to your grandparents. Um, you know, you know how in the summer they're like always cold, and in the winter they don't they don't feel the cold, or in the winter they've already been outside, and then when they come in to warm up, they're like, or even in the summer, their their hands and their feet are like ice, and that is that is called uh, vascular insufficiency, and uh, that's a problem. Pulter monitor, stress test, Doppler. Oh, let's look at the word ultrasound. Ultrasounds are really neat because it's a way that I can look inside your body without being invasive. So we use ultra, which is means above and beyond sound. Also known as US, right? Sometimes they call it a Doppler, sonogram, that's another one. So ultrasound uh means uh ultra means above or beyond sound also known as a sonogram recording of sound right so uh uh cardio sonogram or cardio us uh cardiac uh us or cardio uh, ultrasound also known as cardiac doppler we do blood flow studies and all these other things and it's really really neat because you throw sound and then you know just like echolocation that they use for like dolphins and stuff and radar it comes back and it gives us a picture and uh we could diagnose a lot of really neat things and i don't have to cut into the dangerous triangle of your neck the anterior portion of your neck here this part like this like this right uh that we really don't want to cut that open there's a lot of really really dangerous things uh in your neck uh, we talked about atheroma, phlebography, you could figure that out, thrombolytics, thrombolysis, atheroma, yeah. angiography, arteriosclerosis, the arteriography, AICD. Now, what's a defibrillator? That's important. Defibrillator. So, or is a machine, right? Or a process of no fibrillations. And what's fibrillation? The best way I can show it to you, the best way I can explain it to you is to show it to you. How's that? Oops, missed the chat. Oh, MRI. Uh, MRI is magnetic resonance imaging. We usually use that for, um, uh, for like brain stuff, neurologic stuff, right? Um, not really too good for the heart. Uh, it's not really too good for the heart, but you know, um, uh, it's more for neurologic stuff. It's more if you want to compare hard versus soft things. That's the easiest way to put it. So what's fibrillation? Now, remember I told you that the heart has to beat rhythmically. And when the electricity of the heart gets all messed up, this happens. Do, do, do. Man, can you just show it? Catheter ablation. Oh, they're not going to. Oh. Man, I really got to memorize where. Well, just know that uh, I can't find it. Fibrillation. Now, everyone, when you guys put your hand to your chest, or when you put the stethoscope to your chest, maybe you guys hear it, you'll hear what? Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, and it's rhythmic, right? Now, what happens when there's no coordination of any of the pumping in your heart? Right? It'll be blah, 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 blah. it'll be crazy, right? And then your heart will start moving around like a bag of worms. 
that's how they uh, in pathology how they how they told us how it feels. But when you feel when you feel a heart that's uh, fibrillating, it just feels like chaos. It just feels like it's trembling, and if it's trembling and not pumping in a coordinated fashion, that means you won't be able to, uh, the blood won't be able to go where it needs to go. So we use this machine, the defibrillator, to zap you with electricity. Now, it's different from the EKG machine. The EKG machine is reading the electricity of your heart. It's not sending anything to your heart. It's actually receiving the electrical impulses of your heart. But the defibrillator is actually sending electricity anywhere from like 50 to 300 joules. And, uh, and, and here's the, also the funny thing that I learned when I was in an EMS. If you put this machine on a person who has a normal heart rate, do you think you can now cause fibrillations? Yes, I learned that the hard way. Just notice that I learned that the hard way. Let's just leave it at that. Right? We used to try to zap. We used to try to zap each other when I was younger. I was in my 20s. We tried to zap each other with a uh, defibrillator because we thought it was funny. It's not funny. It's painful and uh, uh, it causes a lot of medical problems. Beta barkers, pharmacology. I'd rather you know the word pharmacology. Logi, study of what? Pharma, medications, drugs. And you will learn with uh, Dr. Bromley, which I believe uh, was your future pharmacology professor, you will learn that everything is a drug, okay? Water is a drug. Anything that will affect uh, the body uh, anatomically or physiologically is a drug. Statins, thrombolytics, eh, you don't need to know that. Okay, we're already at the end. So that's the end of this uh, PowerPoint and hopefully by next week. And I will share with you also um, the lecture from last week that um, delves specifically into um, the, the, the words, but it goes through a lot of the words that we went over uh, in, in this particular slideshow. So does anyone have any questions, comments, or recipes? If not, now I forgot someone told me how to how to look at if how to look at all of you all at once. And do the chat. Uh, yes, please regarding what? The the video? Uh, um good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm so sorry, I joined the class late. And, um, oh, okay, it'll be recorded and I'll put it out there. Yeah, my question is, the last session, my computer had a glitch and I had to use my phone, so I haven't been able to okay, complete but, uh, the assignment. And I wanted to find out if we have to do it. I extended everything till, till next week so that um, 